Good morning and welcome back to 501C TV. I'm your host, Janelle Harris. This is the podcast that talks to system change leaders, thought leaders, nonprofits, and nonprofit partners all around our area to find out what missions are going on around the area and what events are they doing that we just can't miss out on. And this morning, I am so excited to have in studio with me here today, Barbara Scarlata and Tracy Siegel Israel from Speak Up for Kids, Palm Beach County. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Thank you for having us. And I, I'm very excited. This is a, a very um, important, near to my heart, um, really important. Um, let's see, this is where I screw up. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just going to edit me out and just say, Thank you so much for joining me this morning. I am very excited to talk today about Speak Up for Kids in Palm Beach yeah. County. Um, I've I've gone over all the information on your website, which I love your website. You guys have so much information and you're doing some incredible work that I want to make sure that we highlight here today for everyone to know about. So what I would love to know is, Barbara, Tracy, both of you, how you got involved with this organization and, um, and then we'll dive into what what the organization does. And I know you guys have a ton of events that I don't want to miss out on we talking do. about. So Barbara, I will let you take it away. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having us on. Um, uh, my involvement is because I was an I am a retired attorney from Philadelphia suburbs. Mm -hmm. And for 15 years before I moved down to Palm Beach County, I was the attorney appointed by the judge to represent the children in foster care. Gotcha. That was my first exposure. I'd never heard of the foster care system before that. Mm -hmm. But for 15 years, I was able to see the trauma that these children go through. Yes. Uh, so when I moved down to Palm Beach County, uh, I found Speak Up for Kids and decided that I've got to give back to the community. Um, as well, that's pretty much my background. Perfect. So how long has, when did Speak Up for Kids get started? And, you know, kind of what's the background there? Where did they come from? Okay. Um, let me start out by saying that at any one time in Palm Beach County, there's anywhere between 1,400 and 1,600 children who are in the, Palm, the foster care system. Right. Um, back in 2008, um, they were represented it, they're advocated by in court by the guardian, the office of the guardian of light. Mm -hmm. uh, the we, call, of, we call them our guardian angels. Yeah, yeah, we do. yeah, we yeah. Do. which truly, I mean, if you, we could get in and have probably a whole <laughs> a whole segment just on yeah. that the the guardian ad litem program alone because it's incredible what they do. It, it's really incredible what they do, but it's a government funded agency, which means it's underfunded. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in two thousand eight some people who really cared decided to start Speak Up for Kids to have an additional funding mm -hmm. for the guardian ad litem volunteers so that they could do what they really need to do to advocate for the kids in foster care. Right. So that's how Speak Up for Kids got started. Okay. And, and, and when when did that come about? What? 2008. In 2008, yeah. And from that time. moment on, we've kind of expanded the program. We yes. have a lot of different programs now. We've expanded to helping any foster children, any foster families, whatever they might need while they're in the system, any assistance they need. We've, we, we reach out to the community, whether it's... Um, collecting items. We've mm -hmm. had a lot of different organizations collect items for us. We have our upcoming toy drive, and that's always an amazing thing to see. I know a lot of the organizations do toy drives, but it's never too much for these kids because sometimes it's the first time they're celebrating right. these events that they may not have had, and it's they get to pick their own toy. It's actually a beautiful thing to see. The community comes together, and we have corporations, individuals who collect toys for the kids, and we bring it all together in this one big warehouse, and we have Tons of volunteers come and wrap all the presents for the kids for the holidays, and then they send whoever their advocate is to come and pick the toy for them that they wanted, and right. they, bring, they bring it to them, and they have it for the holidays, and they get multiple toys, so it's exactly what they want. Yeah. So it's 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 really nice in that way for once their wishes are met. Yeah, and you know, uh, the in in the last couple of years, I know for me personally, we were talking off camera. There's there's been a lot of organizations that I found out about, and I think foster care is one of those programs that just in general for people that are not involved with it, Absolutely. they don't understand what that means necessarily. Right. So maybe we can talk a little bit just to kind of educate the viewers on what foster care really is and and what happens because it really is in most cases. Uh, Sadly, it's a very traumatic start to to a journey that that a child Absolutely. might be on, and a lot of people don't understand that. They think, "Oh, well, this child was taken and placed into a family, you know," and it's Sometimes. like, "Okay," and now they need some things, and, and it's it's a it's a lot more than that. And and I I want people to understand that so they understand why it's important to support 
an organization like this. Right. Sometimes it's strangers. It, yes. Exactly. What, what people don't know is that uh, the children are taken from their homes because they've been abused, abandoned, or neglected by the parents, by the adults who are supposed to be taking care of them. Correct. Uh, and all too often, uh, they're at first exposed to foster care when a caseworker knocks on their door mm -hmm. and says, you have five minutes to pack up your stuff, and then you're leaving your home. Right. And if I might add in, we prepare these backpacks full of items that they need because they're they don't necessarily have i mean a child is Thank not you. thinking yes. what they need or in a, a traumatic situation Correct. like that so we prepare these backpacks so when they do get placed they have you know the bare necessities as well as something a little more to make them feel a little more comfortable right. and it's full of all kinds of items that's been donated yeah so which i think is important and and i'll Absolutely. and i'll let you go on on that because i again i i think that people don't understand the um the situation when it first unfolds and and yes. really how heartbreaking that They're that really about is. How heartbreaking, <laughs> how heartbreaking it is to the child. Yes. Um, so these children uh, are taken out of their homes because they have not been taken care of by the parents who are supposed to be taking care of them. Uh, as I said a few minutes ago, half about half of them are ages five and under. Mm -hmm. So these are little kids who do not understand why they have to leave their parents. Right. It's a traumatic experience for them, very traumatic experience. Uh, they're brought in front of a judge. The judge then says to them, you cannot go back to your home, mm -hmm. replacing you in the home of a total stranger. Right. Well, that's scary. It's, it's really, it's really scary. Yeah. That's and sometimes heartbreaking. We, you know, there are foster yeah. families, but we do not have enough for for all the children. So that, that, that's another question Which that I have. So constant need of foster family. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure that number fluctuates and it, go, it goes it up and down daily, which, you know, I went to your website and you have the numbers on there, but I know that that is it constantly it changes daily. It's yeah. changing daily. So we advocate, we have foster, Palm, it's called Foster Palm Beach, where we advocate for families as well, because we're hoping to bring more families what's, for the children. Yeah. What's the we, um, what's the disparity between, like what's the need for families versus kids? There is a great need. Okay. Um, we have approximately yeah. 300 or so foster families right now. And we gotcha. can have anywhere from 13 to 1,800 kids at yeah. a time. Or? Yep. So we are, we are always searching for loving, caring foster homes for these kids. Right. What's the, what's the average stay? So, I mean, I know it's case by case, but is, is there any statistics on the average length that once a child is placed, you know, how long they might be there or how many families they might go to, right? Even that's and that, and that is a problem because sometimes they have to go from foster home to foster yeah. home to foster home. And you're dealing with a child who doesn't understand why they were taken out of their home to begin with. Correct. And then they start getting used to a first foster home and then we transfer to another foster home, which is a good thing about the guardian light of volunteers because they are with that child no matter where that child is placed. It's consistency. Interesting. Yeah. I did it's not know that. It's a consistent person that stays with them, so it becomes, per se, part of their family okay. or somebody they can depend on to look to who advocates when they need something. I did not know that. That's, and that's a lot of times yeah, where we come that's in. comforting, yeah. We sometimes that guardian light of volunteer is the only stable adult uh -huh. in that child's life. I would, yeah, for sure, which, yeah. which is, um, you know, thankfully they have them for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so tell me a little bit then maybe about some of the programs, right? Because you guys have a ton, you have a ton, have of, a programs, ton of programs, we have, which I love. Right, we have a wonderful program that involves the community, which is so important these days to have community support yes. and to teach student leaders. We want you know the world to work together, and we have a lot of really amazing students in this county. Okay, so we've got them advocating for the kids Perfect. in foster care. So they are, they're a wonderful mentor. There, we have about thirteen county, thirteen chapters right now in the county in wow. Palm Beach County. Okay, and it's amazing, and these kids are amazing. I mean, they've gone off to some of the most wonderful schools with some of the community service they've done. Okay. And um, they make projects for the kids. They they do anything to advocate. They're basically a voice for the kids within okay. their community and their schools. And, and Tracy, is this run like through the school districts? Is this like um, a program through the schools? Well, it's not. We we work with each school. Okay, got it. But we, we, we're we constantly going like we have 13 chapters right now and we're looking to have awesome. chapter in every single school because it's important that, that yeah. kids and, and they seem to want to help and they care and they come up with these amazing ideas and it's nice to have every kid to see that there's a world outside there and people who aren't as lucky as them who yeah. can use their help. So we're, we're raising really kind people that way and there is a lot of kind people in this community that yeah really want to help awesome that's the one thing we found out it's very nice i love that so that program students speak up for kids was started at the beginning of the pandemic okay so it's fairly new it's fairly new oh my gosh i love that what grew out of that is music buddies 
two Wellington sophomores decided that they wanted to help right here, foster care. Back. I know. <laughs> yeah, Wellington. Yeah. Wellington. I love this. Uh, they, they decided that they want to make sure that children in foster care who want to get music lessons can have music lessons. So that. they started a program which we found called Music Buddies. Okay. And that has been a phenomenal success. And so to that point, Barbara, because when I was looking on your website, um, one thing that jumped out at me, and again, like I just want to highlight this so people understand, is that um, you know, when we talk about kind of the different ages and stages of these kids that, that are going through the foster program, um, are the older kids, you think about um, extracurricular activities. Right. Where, where does that leave them in the shuffle okay. of all this, right? That's huge. We have a program called Embrace Kids. Okay. Embrace Kids ensures that the children that are in foster care can do the same things that their classmates can do and their best friends can do. If they want to be able to have swimming lessons or soccer lessons, we make sure that that happens. Okay. If they want to do, go to an after school program, we make sure that happens. If they want to go to summer camp, we make sure that happens. Mm -hmm. School trips. Yes. We want to take the stigma away from being called a foster family, yes. foster kid. As they want to be normal kids. Absolutely. They want to have the same things as the other kids. And, yeah. and with that, when children age out, there's a great concern of what happens yes. and where the support they get. So we've started also, um, where it came through the Student Speak Up for Kids okay. idea. It's a life skills portal. And it's for the kids who are aging out. It's yeah. all the things that we who might learn from our own family. Right. You know, simple things like washing your clothes to how to manage your money. It's a life that walks them through the basics that they may not, unfortunately, have been given in their yeah. childhood. So they can kind of go on and see, and it also links them to what they might need, you know, different different things that might help them in so their future smart. so that they can excel. We also have some, gra we have a graduation program at the end of, you know, the school year. Yeah. And we have, we give out scholarships to, awesome. to the, some of the kids, and then we throw them a big party because... Some of these celebrations are the first time yes. they've ever had any celebrations. And we yeah. have this wonderful, wonderful, this uh, gift of birthday. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my gosh. You can donate like $25. And some kids have never had a birthday, which you is guys. crazy in this yeah. county to think of. There are kids who it's the first time. So they provide a cake for them. They provide, you know, just a, a present. And they it's 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 such a nice thing because you that would is, never think that somebody would not have a that birthday. That is so great because I feel like that is so attainable yeah. for anybody yep. exactly right for, right. for anybody and it and makes a difference in that's such like an important thing and that's really what struck me when i was doing my research before having you guys on here was the fact that um you're creating these programs to create that normalcy right to follow them through because i think that is that is the the one big thing that um again a lot of people don't know they don't right. understand and they don't realize that that's the stuff that really i think sticks with yeah. A kid, through, you know, if you think about your own memories growing up, right. something as simple it's as a birthday. It's so hard, and it's hard not to get teary. Yeah, I am disgusted. It happens already, to me so often. Barbara, don't make me cry. <laughs> it's it's they very want, hard. They it's want to be normal. Kids. Absolutely, of They're course they do. To be normal kids. So the most vulnerable. It's hard enough to like be a yeah. kid, and then I'm thinking about going through like middle school. I have a middle schooler, and then into high school. I mean, there's already so right. many regular challenges, which is growing up, and then to have on top of that. And so this is, this is why I got involved because I my background is not in. This. And I just, I always said that, you know, I wanted to help kids. And after hearing some of the stories yeah. and someone not even having a birthday. I know. It, it made I'm me like want to, yeah, it makes you like, and then you realize that you can't change the entire world. But like we've talked about this before in our office, that if you've changed one kid's life, Absolutely. you've changed the world. So Absolutely. It's, it's just, the, it's it's so important that somebody advocates. They are our most vulnerable youth. Somebody's got their children. Somebody's got to speak up for yeah. them. And like you said, I mean, if, if you, if you touch one of them, you know, who knows, they'll come back and, you know be a part in some way. That happens all the time. I, I can only imagine. I mean, I'm sure you've probably What about the event we just had with, with the singing and the, you know, the uh, event that we just did where yeah. we had her come and sing at it. We had someone right. who sings right. and she came and sang for everybody at one of the events who, who was a foster child. And it yeah, was- she has aged out of the foster care system, but she's still very involved with us. I'm sure. I mean, I, I would think um, that as the years go on, you just see more and more of that. And, um, you know, for the kids that are going through it now, if there's anything that can give them more hope than that than seeing somebody like, you know, I made it and look, I, I did it. And so can you, I think that's. And having people advocate for abs them. Absolutely. They're children. Somebody has to. Yeah, that's so great. And I'm, I'm so happy that you guys are right here in, um, in Palm Beach County. Now, I know that there's other chapters uh, around Florida that we talked about um, under Speak Up for Kids. But um, how many how many people do you guys have working with your organization 
We're small but mighty. Uh, that's I'll leave it at that. It's <laughs> usually the case in the nonprofit world. That's why you guys are powerhouses. Um, but from a volunteer network, you guys, I'm sure you're volunteer. Tremendous. We, we yeah. have very active volunteers. Huge. Which is awesome. Yeah. If people want to volunteer, what kind of things can they do? I'm sure it's on your website. But it, it is only can website. find a place for anything. Okay. Yeah. And it, we, we're always needing help for uh, at the different events. Yeah. We need help in the office. We need help um, sending out the birthday cards for the kids oh each month. Oh, my gosh. Any specialty that somebody has or any desire, we can find a place for it because place. it's there's always – there's always a place for her. Okay, amazing. Um, anything else you want to say specific to the programs before I'm going to get in because I know Tracy's got a ton to talk about, <laughs> about events. And you guys, these are like really awesome, super fun events that run like very casual and fun up to fancy gala stuff. So we're going to talk about that. But is there anything else you guys want to say specific to any programs that are out there? Um, or just what's your favorite program? What, what's the one near and dear? These are all amazing. My favorite program is Gift of Birthday because I cannot imagine my children growing <laughs> up without having their birthday celebrated. I know. I know. Uh, and you hit me on that one. I am <laughs> like, I'm in. I'm going to be writing cards. <laughs> good, I good. want to. That's amazing. I, I can transfer to my favorite event. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let's let's talk events um, before we run out of time because we have a favorite. bunch. This is my favorite because it actually is just a day specifically for the kids. Okay. And this is um, Winterfest? Winterfest. Okay. And it's an amazing. It is on December 16th. It's coming And up. it's basically just completely a day all about the kids. It's a carnival for them. It's it's just amazing. And we have lots of community support. We have people who underwrite the carnival. Perfect. And it's just a day that they just get to do whatever they want at this carnival. And it really is like a real carnival. You think it's just some small. Where's it at, Tracy? Yeah. It's a real it's, carnival. It's at the... Um, the on Summit Boulevard, but it's yeah. not open. It's just for the kids. Yeah, it's just, just for the kids, kids yes. not for the public. Right, but. but you can. We have a lot of people who a lot of the businesses in the organ in in their organizations come and set up a table for the kids where they do either can do arts and crafts awesome. or an activity with the kid. We've had a lot of really big um, corporations in the area come and set up tables too, and they, it's really nice to see them. You know, so get in there and supporting the kids. And, and yeah. if I can add, sure. Santa comes to this event. Oh, oh the, well. The real Santa. So comes Barbara to my says. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Barbara's got a lifeline to Santa directly <laughs> yep. to him. So yep. he comes to make an early debut. I love that. And I'm then, sure they love that. Yeah, that's it's, great. it's the most wonderful thing to see because everybody always wants to see. And that's for me, I get to see the yeah. kids in action, the kids happy. And I like that. I like to see the positive. Awesome. So that's that's a day for them. Then we, of course, have our galas. You know, yes. we have one coming up April 6th, um, 70s theme, Peace, Love, and Speak Up. Um, our galas are always tremendous. We have about Who 300 love a good people. 70s yes. theme? <laughs> Exactly. We can disco that. on down. So Perfect. it's um, it's a really fun time. And we do a silent auction, which mm -hmm. a lot of the same thing. If anybody, you know, wants to get in touch with us, you can always get in touch with us or check out our events on our on our events page okay. and see what's upcoming. But we're always looking for support, for a sponsorship for any of the events, as well as even if you just want to donate something and promote your business, we yep. do silent auctions and we do a lot of shout outs for you. So you get a, we have a tremendous following. So you Perfect. do get a lot of recognition that way too okay so that's a a great thing and like Amazing. i mentioned we have our toy drive and our wrap party yes um and we just have so many we have our storybook coming up but that's in april that's the, the toy drive since i know we're getting into the holidays tell me about the toy drive is that where um i could set up a toy drive absolutely. collect either at my home or my business absolutely and then bring everything to you at you know at a certain point in time we can pick them up okay awesome yes. so you'll make it super easy because i know yep. That's awesome. So we all can, like unwrap toys yeah. and that type of We stuff. can even email you. We have flyers really cute that you could put. Like we can either give you boxes if you need awesome. or if they want to, somebody just wants to wrap their own box and make it a little bit easier. Right. But, and then we just can give you flyers. You put on the box and it just, we get a tremendous amount of toys. That okay. Way, nice. I love that. And then we share it with whoever needs it. I love it. And then what was the last one? What was the holiday wrapping? We have, yeah, we do the wrap party where Got everyone it. comes together and wraps the toys. Perfect. And we just, and we constantly have, we also have an ambassador program for anyone that wants to help. That's a great way to volunteer too. Okay. And it's a great way to network your business or, you know, your own, whatever it is that you're looking to get out into the community. Right. It's a fabulous advertisement for you. You know, you go on our website and you're able to basically just advocate for us. And just Wonderful. when you meet people in the community, you talk about and, and different ways you try to connect us, we try to connect you. 
kind of like its own little chamber. I love it. And that's a, and we do quarterly ambassador events. We have one coming up Thursday night in um, downtown West Palm. Okay. So anyone that wants to join that too, please, you know, you're welcome to register, see what it's all about. Amazing. And share your business cards and just advocate for us. We would love that. We're always looking to get the community involved and the community is very involved. Yes. It's never too much. Okay, perfect. And that's great. And, and like I said, I just, I really, um, I want the, I want anyone in the community to really understand what you guys do and why it is so important because um, this is right here in our backyard. Mm -hmm. all right. It's happening all day, any times of day, all night long while we're sleeping. And it's, um, you know, it's unfortunately going on. So if we can support it in any way that we can, um, that makes me happy that we have a good community of people to nice. do that. Sometimes so. people think in Palm Beach County, it's you don't Absolutely. really see it, so you, you would don't not, know. From yeah, you would not think in Palm Beach County there is this many children in foster but care. there is. So many um, nonprofits come on here, and mm. these are all, like, um, you know, things going on in our community that are kind of just, like, hidden. Like, people yeah. just don't hear about them. So we want to make sure that people hear about it, that they know about Speak Up for Kids and Thank and you helping. for doing this. Yeah, show. thank it's you wonderful for coming that you on. get the word out. It's I love it. And um, I, I just want to showcase one yes, other thing yes, because yes. Barbara told me if we did not hold these signs up, she was going to be mad. <laughs> How yes. cute are these, you guys? I Speak, I up, speak for up for Kids. kids. Yes, this is so great. <laughs> Um, I really appreciate you both being on the show today. Um, we're going to put up all of your um, your social, your, your website, so everyone knows where to find you. Um, and if there's anything, any last words that you guys want to say before we go, and just we, we love just want to thank for... everybody in the community that yeah. that can get involved with us and you help. You're helping future generations. Absolutely. Absolutely, and that's that's the big thing I think is um, you know you help somebody today and. It helps all of us out Absolutely. down the road. So we're all seeing that. Yeah. <laughs> so I really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you. Thank and, you for having us. Um, look for more from them and and check out all of their events. And we hope to see you there. And thank <laughs> you. For yeah, kids. speak up for kids. <laughs> um, and uh, thank you for joining us again on this um, this version of version this episode of Five Hundred One CTV. <laughs> and I'd like to thank Kana House Studios, Wellington's first and only social content creation studio. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.